Number 21. Repeat exercise 2.20 using an element that has three naturally occurring isotopes. Okay, so if we didn't do number 20, go back and do number 20 first. This one is going to kind of be like a brief overview. So let's get down to business. So for number 20, it said that we need to click on this site and here's the link. And I put a link in the description if you guys don't have the website up, uh, which is the one that's on the right hand of your screen here. So uh, we want to select the mix isotopes tab. Now, first off, they changed that. It's not mixed, mixed isotopes anymore, it's just mixtures. So I'll show you what I mean. So when you go into this website, you're going to come to this, you know, the screen on the right hand side. So all you gotta do is press the play button and then it will bring you to these two options. You don't want isotopes, you want the word mixtures right here. So don't click the one on the right, click the one on the, sorry, don't click the one on the left, click the one on the right. And that will bring us to this nice little simulation here. So it's just called mixtures and not mix isotopes. All right, so they want us to hide the percent composition and average atomic mass boxes. So just on the screen on the right hand side, we're just going to press these little, um, like the white, you know, hyphens that get rid of percent composition. And then we're gonna click it again for average atomic mass. So that's what they mean by hiding it. We don't want it to be shown. And now, it said for number 20 that they wanted the element boron, but in here we need to choose one that has three naturally occurring isotopes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the simulation and see which one gives me three isotopes, three different samples of the same element. So as of right now, we have hydrogen, and this has two isotopes. It has hydrogen one and hydrogen two. So I'm just going to keep clicking until I see one that has three naturally occurring isotopes. So. Helium is not it, it has two of them. Lithium also has two, beryllium has only one. Boron has two, carbon has two. Nitrogen has two, but now oxygen has three. So I think you could do this for oxygen and I believe neon. Yeah, so we'll do it for oxygen, but if you guys wanna try out the simulation by yourself, you could do the same thing for neon if you want. So we're going to pick oxygen. So I'm going to pick oxygen. That's the one that has the three naturally iso isotopes. So for letter A, so I'm just going to put over here, we're just going to write down A, B, C, D, and E. So for A, it says, write the symbols of the isotopes of boron. Now remember, it's oxygen, right? That are naturally occurring in significant amounts. So the three isotopes for oxygen is oxygen 16. So we got to write the symbol. So the symbol for oxygen was O, right? It's always O. So we have O 16. The next one, which is in green is oxygen 17. So O 17. And then for the third one, we have oxygen 18. So O 18. So that's the answer for A. They just wanted the symbols so that's how you write the symbols for isotopes. You put the symbol number and then just what the mass is. 16 for purple, 17 for green, and 18 for orange. All right, letter B. It says, now predict the relative amounts and percentages of these um, oxygen isotopes found in nature. Explain the reasoning behind your choice. So... What we're going to have to do is for this, we have to predict how much of each is in um, the overall amount of oxygen on Earth, technically. Now remember, we're talking about it in terms of percentages. So what is a whole percentage? A whole percentage is always 100%. So whatever we predict it as, the entire percentage, if we add them all up, has to be equal to 100%. So if I have O16, O17, and O18, I just have to think of three different percentages that would, when they add up, be 100%. Now, how am I gonna know what percentage is each? Well, first, we just predict. So we don't have to be you know, spot on the money here. But you know, how would I know that this might be 50%, this might be 40, and this might be 10, right? 
or maybe oxygen 17 is the 10% one. How are we going to know those answers, those close predictions? This information is based off of the periodic table. So I'm just going to say PT, periodic table, um, we'll just say mass of oxygen. So we need to get a periodic table out. Now, if we have a periodic table, you will see basically three things. You'll see the O, so that's standing for oxygen. You'll see the atomic number 8, which represents the number of um, protons. So this is the atomic number. But then you'll see another number, the bigger number, which is the atomic mass, or the mass number. Now this one is going to be in a decimal. Now usually they either give you two, roughly two numbers for oxygen. They either would give you like 16.01 or maybe 15.99. We'll go with this. Actually they give you 16, 17, 18. So I'm just going to say, oh, we'll keep it like that. But either way, this number is very, very, very close to 16, right? Roughly, squiggly line, roughly 16. So that means that majority of the isotopes are going to be close to the mass number of 16. So oxygen 16 would have the highest percent. So I know that this number should be the highest number because the average is roughly 15.99. It's going to be roughly 16. So I'm just going to say it's very, very close. So maybe there's, I don't know, we'll say 98% of all oxygen is oxygen 16, because this number that you find on the periodic table is super, 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 super close to 16. But now we just got to divvy up the other 2%. Well, let's, let's just be fair. It's just, we're just predicting. So maybe 1% is oxygen 17, and the other is oxygen 18. And those are your three values. Now, could you have said, you know, 94 for oxygen 16? then you would have like you would have 6 left over so maybe you would divvy it up from 3 to 3 that's fine too we're just predicting here but the object is is that you should know that the majority of it is coming from oxygen 16 because this number the 16 is super close to the average mass so that answer is b now let's see it says for c Add isotopes to the black box to make a mixture that matches your prediction in B. You may drag isotopes from the bins, and you may click on more, and then move the sliders. Now here is something else that they changed. There's no more more button here. It's literally just the button that um, has a slider here, so it kind of looks like this. So I'm going to click it right now. If I go over here... There it is, this button right here that I just clicked on. These are your sliders. So I'm just going to say that I have 98. So I'm going to make oxygen 16 go all the way to 98. Oxygen 17, we're just going to say 1. And oxygen 18, we're just going to say 1. Perfect, just like that. So that's the answer to C. So for C, we basically didn't have to do any thing written down. We just had to manipulate on the, in, um, the simulation here. But as you can see, there's way more purple oxygen 16s than a green oxygen 17 and a, I guess now it's red, oxygen 18. So for C, we didn't really have to do anything. But now for D, it says reveal the percent composition and average atomic mass boxes. How well did your mixture match? with your predictions, and then if necessary, adjust the isotope amounts to match your prediction. So let's see. I'm going to now uncover percent composition. And yeah, we hit it right on the, right on the nose, 98%, 1%, and 1%. So that was perfect. So I'm just going to say percent composition was perfect to our prediction. And now, let's just see, they want us to... Ah, so in this case, it's 
our average atomic mass with these predictions. So I'll just put average atomic mass, AAM. Our prediction was 16.025 AMU. So we got really, really, really close to 15.99, which is roughly what's on the periodic table. We got 16.025. So that's all that they wanted for D. They just wanted you to see if you matched your prediction. We definitely matched it for our percent composition, so we could check that off. Now, for E, it says select nature's mix of isotopes and compare it to your prediction. How well does your prediction compare with the naturally occurring mixture? All right. So now I'm just going to click this box, this circle right here that says nature's mix. And oof, we almost did it, right? The, the in nature... In nature, the percent composition is even more crazy, right? We had 98%, but the actual amount of oxygen 16 is like 99.757%. That's crazy. Oxygen 17 is 0.038%, and oxygen 18 is 0.205%. So that's even more exaggerated than what we gave of 98%, 1%, and 1%. So this is the percent composition. So I'll just put percent comp. Also, the average atomic mass, so the AAM, is 15.999, just like I said before, which, which is what you will find on the periodic table. Now here it says... Explain, if necessary, adjust your amounts to match the nature's amounts as close as possible. But with ours, I mean, we basically had the most exaggerated that we could have made it. So if I go back to my mix, I'll click this circle here. There's really nothing else that I could do. I could do 99, but still, that wouldn't really change anything, right? And I can't do decimals here, and I can't really get rid of oxygen 17 because I need the three isotopes. So... You can't really do anything more than we have done to match the amounts. We can't specifically match them, right? They say to match nature's amounts. We can't do that because the simulation doesn't allow us to, but we could try to get them as close as possible. And how we did it was as close as possible. So this just means that out of all the oxygen in nature, the majority of it is going to be oxygen 16, with very, very trace amounts of oxygen 17 and very, very, very little trace amounts of oxygen 18. So you guys try this out. The other three isotope one was neon. So give it a shot and tell me about it in the comments, how it turned out. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you for staying to the end. I hope this helped you guys out a lot. If you would be so kind as to click the subscribe button, it gets the word out to other students just like yourself who are trying to, you know, work with the OpenStax textbook. We would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys all in number 22. Take care. Bye-bye.